This is No Filter, and I'm Sophie Simmons. And now, meet plus-size model and TV personality, Denise Bedell. You've had quite a whirlwind year. Yeah. You're the first plus-size model to walk in New York Fashion Week. That's well, amazing. First, I am still like super humbled at the fact that that even happened. You think you're at the top of your game at many different stages, I think, throughout. Like, I remember when I was like, oh, if I work Nordstrom, I made it. Or like, if I book mm -hmm. Target, I made it, right? And so, I, in my mind, New York Fashion Week, it wasn't even attainable. Like, it wasn't even a thing that was, oh yeah, I'm gonna walk New York Fashion Week and walk in front of Anna Wintour, like, never. And you've been part of now the shows at Fashion Week, you were part of a reality show about plus size women, you've been in fashion spreads, but how do you feel about the term plus size? I think other people have a problem with it more than I do. I don't care what you call me. I'm glad to even have a place in this fashion industry. Plus size, straight size, in betweeny, I don't care regardless. I just, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a curvy woman and hopefully someday they do end up cutting out the word plus size. But for right now, it's nice to just have a section for us all together. I get it. It's nice to have a place. It's nice for the industry to even acknowledge that we're here. Yeah. I mean, we exist. Take me back to maybe those moments of rejection or insecurity, maybe what people told you. Growing up, I was always the tallest girl in class. I mean, I was like fourth grade, big boobs. That's tall. hard at that age. I was a jolly green giant. It was really embarrassing. I remember I'd get up every morning and like my mom would tape me down. Like I'd do like the masking tape like in now and then and I'd go in circles and then I'd put on a sports bra and then a big shirt. I just didn't want to be so big, you know, like I just, I felt like I was still a kid, but with a woman's body, and it's it was really hard. It's hard to be a young girl with a curvy figure. Yeah, and it's then, hard. And it was crazy because kids would be like, "Oh, she stuffed her boobs." I'm like, "I don't want to have boobs." Like I'm in fourth grade. Like, what are you talking about? And so, it was a real big challenge to to grow up so fast. I was always just a little more sassy and curvaceous than most people growing up. And when I got into acting, and I was always told, you know, that that was a flaw. You know, that that was something I should correct. You know. It was always, oh, you should fix your accent. You know, if you lose 10, 15 pounds, you'd be perfect because you have the leading lady personality, but the best friend's body type. And I was like, well, there are all these rules. There's too many requirements. I was always like, I don't want to lose those 10, 15 pounds. Like, I have no problem with my shape. I started doing makeup. I went to makeup school in LA. Mm -hmm. I met a plus size model, and she's like, hey, would you like to do my makeup for a photo shoot? If it wasn't for her, I'd have no clue what I would be doing mm -hmm. because photographer scouted me. I took some pictures with her and I never did makeup again. And it's been eight years of- You just never looked back. Never looked back. I saw that door like a little cracked open and I ran through it. Okay, so you're a very confident woman and you are still like really young to be so confident with your body. I know a lot of women in their 40s who are just now becoming okay with it. Where does that confidence come from? I think that I've learned to be confident through fashion and through my line of work. I grew up with my mom struggling with her weight a lot. She went from a size two to a size 22 and she always kind of yo-yo dieted. Even when she got to the smaller size, there was always more, you know, it was always like a constant unhappiness. I couldn't understand why the most beautiful woman in the world to me didn't think she was perfect. So I took that with me. I kind of learned through her mistake, I guess. I never wanted to have to waste my time trying to fit perfection or fit an ideal of perfection. She's also that generation of women who grew up thinking thin is beautiful. And I, I grew up in a generation that had the Jennifer Lopez's and the Beyonce's and all these women coming out, kind of proving that you can be curvaceous and still be accepted and be mainstream or be beautiful. And so I started modeling. I had no clue what I was doing at first. One of my first jobs was lingerie and I had, I was freaking out. And I just played Christina Aguilera and the Pussycat Dolls and I just, I danced around for like hours. And I saw the pictures and they're like, oh my God, this is beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, let me look. Like, oh my God, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah, I was mortified. And I started seeing the pictures and I was like, holy crap, that does look good. I came in a generation where social media was starting to become really a huge platform. And so I started getting messages from girls um, about how much they were inspired by my pictures. And somewhere in the process of me finding myself and these girls reaching out, I found my confidence. Mm -hmm. um, and it became bigger than me. It was no longer just me having a job, a cool job, or getting to travel, or putting on cool clothes, it was like a message. I, I had to like stand for what I believed in because I didn't realize that there were women out there struggling who needed someone to stand up for them. So talk to me about when you go to a shoot and they ask you to wear pads, and just like for our viewers who have no idea what I'm talking about, like what are the pads for? Okay, so um, we're all required to have them. It's literally to fill out. You could put them here, here on the belly, like the little fake boobies, and it literally it just fills you up to be the sample size so that it's 
supposedly easier to fit the sample. Which is strange because a lot of women think fitting sample sizes means being really, really small. Yeah, but here in this case, they're like making women bigger to fit these samples. I'm curvy, you know, I have a big butt, big boobs, small waist, it just, I, I tend to fit them. I thankfully haven't had to put on the panty because I can't imagine how that would feel. Yeah, because then you're bigger and so then it's not really the best you, you like you don't feel that confident but it is something very common in our industry there are a lot of girls out there padding to be bigger i would love for these clients to just take a chance on a curvier girl can we just like start the campaign right now like ditch the pads ditch the pads like i'm not wearing the pads to everyone out there if you ask me to bring we're not them, doing it i'm not bringing them and since becoming a mom do you think your views on body image have changed at all do you think they've become stronger or i think so i think i've always my views have always been pretty solid, mm -hmm. um, but she's six and a half, and she's everything I am times a thousand. She's come to set with me her entire life, and I remember I just knew like there was this extra fire. I was like, oh, now I got a kid. Like I got way more to prove now than I did before. So what are some very specific things you preach to your daughter? Well, my daughter has the most amazing, beautiful curly hair, and she's got this gap and the dimple, and I, I always tell her, you know, you're perfect just the way you are. We have this debate all the time. She'll be like, mommy, why is your hair straight and my hair is curly? And I'm like, oh, because, you know, that's the way you were supposed to be. That's how you were made. And, you know, I'm always showing her, like, on jobs when they're, like, curling my hair. I'm like, mommy, I want your hair. Like, look how beautiful it is. And mm -hmm. I, I just, I want her to feel fully confident in who she is and her skin. Because I feel like it's so easy to look at everything else outside and think that that's what you're supposed to be. It's kind of heavy for a six-year-old. Yeah, but she gets it. Like, I mean, she schools me more than I school her. <laughs> It's amazing to think that you can inspire people and you can change people just by being who you are.